Hey, this is Mikey with another After Effects tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about selective contrast. What is it and why you need it? Plus, we'll build a preset that uses it. So first, let's talk what is selective contrast. Well, for instance, let me uh, bring in this shot right here. And right now I don't have any brightness or contrast on it. And as I'm going through, I can see some of the highlights a little bit bright and I want them to pop and stand out a little bit more. But if I add contrast, which would make things kind of pop and stand out a little bit more, it's gonna make things in here too dark. So for instance, let me turn on this brightness contrast and bring up the contrast. It's gonna get start getting too dark in here. And so what selective contrast is, is we're adding the contrast, brightness and contrast to a selective range. So just the highlights, just the midtones, just the shadows. And then it's the rest that is not selected is unaffected by the contrast. Really kind of a slick way of doing things. So I have one already built. And here we have selective contrast. So let's take a look at the difference here. Let me turn this back on. So this is no contrast, no nothing. Here's selective contrast. You can see I'm just selecting kind of this range. And as I move into the, the black, you see it's not adding any more contrast into the black. So let's build this rig. You can see I've got a lot of different things here, but I have, what I have is I've got some sliders to kind of control everything. So it makes it easy. So let's start with a brand new composition. I'm gonna take my footage and I just drag it and drop it on this little frame and it brings up a new composition. So the initial way of creating a selective contrast is pretty easy, but then we're gonna kinda make things a little bit more advanced and we're gonna turn it into a preset. So that's pretty fun. So first let's, we need to select the color range or a value range. So let's go to the keying and get extract. And this is where you select, you know, right there that's selecting the high, the, the brights, that's selecting the dark, this is selecting the midtones. So that's what the extract filter is for. Next, let's go to blur and sharpen and let's get a channel blur. And I'm gonna blur the alpha. This to make things so it blends really nice together. Next, let's bring in our brightness contrast. So if you like to use levels or curves or whatever you want to use for brightness and contrast, I'm going to use just the brightness and contrast effect. So I can bring down the brightness, bring up the contrast. And then lastly, to composite it back onto itself, let's go to channel and CC composite. And with this, there's a couple of things we need to change. First right here where it says RGB only, uncheck that. Next, where it says in front, we need to go to overlay. And there we have your basic selective contrast. So let's just take a look. I'm gonna duplicate this. And let's turn off all of the effects on the top layer. And we are just adding contrast to that selected area. So I might wanna come in here to the channel blur and really crank that blur. You can see you can see exactly the area it's selecting. Let's go ahead and crank that blur. And this is a really kind of a nice look. I'm adding some contrast and some pop just to the highlights. So pretty nice. Now let's rig this up so we can create a preset out of it, make it so it's really nice to use. And so when you're doing a preset and you're rigging things up, you want to think about, okay, what do I want to control easily with a slider or um, some sort of controller? and not have to dig into all of this for. So for this, I want to control where the black cutoff is, the shadow cutoff. And in case I want to do just the opposite, I should want to also control where the highlight cutoff is. So that's two sliders right there. Next, I'm going to want to be able to control this blur to smooth things out. And then lastly, the brightness and contrast. Now, what I like to do is I like to have the brightness and contrast together. So full contrast and full minus brightness. And I'm gonna link those to one single slider and do that together. 
So let's add our sliders. I'm going to just close those down for now. So that was four sliders. So let's go to Effect, Expression Control, Slider. First one is going to be the brightness and contrast. And I'm going to call this just Drama or Pop. Uh, I like Drama. Next will be my Shadow Cutoff. And I'm just hitting Command D to duplicate those. And then you hit Return on the keyboard to change the name. And this is Highlight Cutoff. And then duplicate one more. And we're going to call this Matte Feather. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and take all of these and move them to the top. Because with the preset, I want to get to them first. I don't want them to be down at the bottom. So let's start at the top drama. So I want this to be from 0 to 100. So 0 is no effect, 100 is full effect. And then if I want to go backwards, I'll go to the negative 100. So let's go to the brightness and contrast. And this is not quite right because this is tops out at minus 150. And this tops out at 100. And this is going from 0 to 100. So I need to do a little bit of math. So let's start with the brightness. I'm going to hit Option or Alt on the keyboard and click on the stopwatch, and it brings up this expression box. I'm going to use the pick whip, and I'm going to grab this drama slider. And since I want it to be at 100 equals negative 150, I'm going to times this by negative 1.5. And so then when I go to 100, you see that goes to negative 150. Now, this contrast is easier because it's going to be a one-to-one. -one. So I just need to select... The same thing, so option click on it, use the pick whip, and grab the drama slider. Okay, that looks like it's rigged up pretty good. Next, we have the shadow cutoff, and that is in the extract filter. And as I move this, you can see it's the black point down here, and it goes from 0 to 255. So, what I want to do is I need this slider from 0 to 100 to equal to 0 to 255. So a little bit of math again. So I'm going to grab this black point, and I'm going to grab the shadow cutoff. I'm going to times this by 2.55. And then as I slide this, it's going to slide my shadow cutoff right there. Next is the white point, And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to grab the highlight cutoff and times it by 2.55. And I want this to be at the top. So then I can bring that down or bring this up. And I've got this highlight shadow thing going on. I can control it from these sliders. And then the last is the matte feather, which is going to be the feather of the channel blur. So option or alt click on the stopwatch. I'm going to grab that pick whip, bring it up to the slider. And since I need a lot of blurriness, that's 400. And this is you know going to 100. So I'm going to times this whole thing by four so that it's going to blur things a little bit faster. So let's close this down and let's see how things work. So first off, let's bring this matte feather slider. Let's bring that up. That seems to be working good. I can bring the drama down. Change my cutoff of the, the shadow end or even if I want to cut off some of the highlights. And that's looking pretty good. So that's with no selective contrast. This is with selective contrast. Let's see what it looks like inside where it's dark. Yeah, you can see it's a lot nicer. It brings down some of those values. Everything's a lot more even. Now, one thing I like to do when I'm creating presets is to change the names of all these right here because it gets a little bit more cluttery. So I'm just going to hit Enter on the keyboard and do a bunch of underscores. And what you have to do is you actually have to have different amount of underscores for each one because otherwise it'll rename these things if it's the exact same name. So the first one did 8, then that one did 9. I'll do 10 on this one. And then 11 on this one. And then that's just going to make things um, really drive your focus on these sliders up here. So when you apply the preset, this is what you're going to see. Now, how do we turn this into a preset? That's pretty simple. Let's grab all of these. Make sure you grab the ones that say don't touch as well. Let's go to animation, save animation preset, give it a nice location. I'm going to call this one selective contrast and let's apply the preset now. 
So this top layer now has nothing on it. Let's go to my effects and presets. We have selective contrast and grab it, drag it right on. And there it is. So uh, one thing to remember is whatever numbers you have these sliders set on when you save the preset, that's what it's going to apply it as. So if you don't want it um, like this, then make sure you set the sliders to the way you want it, your defaults. So that is selective contrast. I hope you go out and create this preset. And um, it's really kind of a cool thing. It's an easy way to bring some nice contrast and pop to the highlights without adding too much darkness into the shadows. Very controllable, very customizable. And if you create the preset, then you can redo it very easily anytime you want. So thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, just put them down in the comments below. And if you found this tutorial useful, make sure you share it with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, wherever you are most socially active. And we'll see you next time.